data centers consume about 3% of the world's electricity. And here's the thing, most of that energy isn't even powering the computers, it's cooling them. So the question the industry's been asking is, what if we didn't need cooling infrastructure at all? What if we could just radiate the heat directly into space? I'm a research scientist at University of Arizona. So for the past few months, I've been running the numbers, you know, full thermal analysis, orbital mechanics, economic modeling. Let me, uh, let me show you what's possible. Picture this, 81 satellites orbiting at like 650 kilometers altitude. Each one carries four Google TPU processors. That's about 3.67 petaflops of computing power. Solar arrays deliver around 3,500 watts of continuous power. And because you're in orbit, there's no day-night cycle, just constant sunlight. Now here's where it gets interesting, okay? The main challenge with any data center is thermal management. Each satellite generates 1,200 watts of waste heat. On Earth, you'd need massive cooling infrastructure chillers, cooling towers, pumps cycling thousands of gallons of water. I mean, it's a lot of equipment, but in space, you use radiative cooling. So the heat flows through vapor chamber heat pipes to aluminum radiator panels. Those panels radiate infrared energy directly to deep space at 2.7 Kelvin. No moving parts, no water, no pumps, just, just physics. I ran the thermal modeling on this. Junction temperatures stabilize at um, 117.7 Celsius. That's seven degrees below max spec. During eclipse periods, temperature drops by only 1.3 degrees. The thermal time constant is 37 minutes. So, you know, plenty of thermal mass. It's stable. The efficiency numbers tell the real story, right? Power usage effectiveness, 1.17 ground-based data centers average like 1.58. So that's about 26% better efficiency. Zero water consumption, zero direct carbon emissions, and basically unlimited cooling capacity. Now, the economics. This is where it gets really interesting. Break-even happens at $218 per kilogram launch cost. SpaceX is projecting prices in that range by the mid-2030s or so. Below that price point, space actually becomes cheaper than Earth. So yeah, the engineering works, the physics checks out, the economics are, they're approaching viability. So the question is, who's going to build it first? Thanks for watching.